When we sit down to watch sport, we think of watching the superstars. We think of seeing them on the stadium and on our screens. Yet hardly do we ever think about what goes into making sure that those people show up on the stadium and on our screen. Hello, my name is Ngosi Nube and this is a locker room on NRTV. This is a show that takes you into the locker rooms of different sports disciplines and introduces you to different people who work hard to make sure that your superstars show up on the stadium and on the screen. I am excited to kick off the show with a woman who's breaking glass ceilings and taking one for the ladies. This is a lady who brings order to the big boys at the old Hararians Rugby Club. Nyari, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Nkasi. All right, so before we go any further, please tell us who Nyari is. Nyari is a family therapist, um, sports manager, and a mother of three. Yeah, yes, right. this is Nyari. Okay, so at sports, you had me at sports manager. So when you say sports manager, what I hear in my head is you walk around with a megaphone and you're telling these big men what to do every day. Is that is that what happens with your job? Not exactly. <laughs> uh, I don't run around telling the boys what to do. They already know what to do. Mm -hmm. I actually work hand in hand with the coach, mm -hmm. uh, putting um, all the logistics or at all the Hararians Rugby Club into order so it's not like i run around with a megaphone <laughs> but i just do all this all mm -hmm. the logistics and planning behind the scenes before the match game mm -hmm. at training and at practice so it sounds to me like you're present all through the process i'm present all through the process i'm there training mm -hmm. i'm there before the match game i'm even there should we have injuries i have to make sure that the boys are well catered for mm -hmm. they've eaten and everything is in order they've got water everything so yeah that's what i do all right so is there an intersection between your job and the job of the coach no right. we, our roles are clearly defined mm -hmm. the coach focuses mainly on coaching but also has his back i'm there with him when he's coaching i'm there at training yeah so we got each other's back our roles are clearly defined all right, that being said, do you feel like managers get the same amount of attention and same amount of credit that coaches get? Well, not even the coaches do get that amount <laughs> of credit. It's actually the players at the end. And yet they forget that there are people behind the scenes that push mm. the players to achieve their goals at the end. Yes. So I don't feel that they do mm -hmm. get the recognition, but hey, we are excited. We are there to push these boys to reach their limits mm -hmm. and we do what we do best. All right, so now you're in sport professionally. Say a couple of decades ago, would you have known that you would be sitting here talking to me about a job that you do full time in sport? Not really, <laughs> no. I did have a passion for sport because all mm -hmm. my kids were athletes mm -hmm. and they still are. Yes. So that's when I fell in love with sports, but not even rugby. And my kids don't even play rugby, but I found myself interested in rugby because mm -hmm. I would sometimes sit and just watch. And also what really put me into wanting to be with the sports people mm -hmm. was the fact that I realized that there was a gap in terms of mental wellness and their yes. sport. I can actually say that I was watching Soka when, what is his name, Suarez, Suarez uh -huh, uh -huh. beat one of his uh, opponents. Yes. And then I asked myself that this was not just about Soka, uh -huh, it must uh -huh. have been something else. So this is what also made me interested in understanding people from the sporting perspective as a, men as a mental health advocate. All right, I like that you've brought that up because that leads me to ask then, how beneficial is your mental health training in bringing this team together? Sometimes we admire the 
natural physique that mm -hmm. these sporting people have yes. and forgetting that they're also individual with issues. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to give this guys an opportunity to have somebody they can talk to in the sporting fraternity so that we can be there as therapists understanding them from the fields mm -hmm. and how they actually uh, do all what they, whatever they do because we were just admiring them with the physical fitness yes. and ignoring the mental aspect of them because at the end of the day they're also individuals with issues so that's what that's also true. made me fall in love mm -hmm in interacting and wanting to work with the soccer and rugby players. So what is it like spending so much time with these guys? What's your relationship with them like? It's awesome, you know, mm -hmm. they, uh, I get so much respect from, from, from working with the boys, mm -hmm. from working with the men actually, because yes. some of them are men. Of course. So I get so much respect to the extent that at one point I was like, huh, when I was talking to my coach, mm -hmm. And I was just explaining what we needed to do, and he was like, yes, ma'am. And I was like, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I get so much respect from these mm -hmm. guys, and I really enjoy working with them. Oh, that's wonderful. So then now my question would be, if you, you've, have you played sport at any point in your life? Not really. I only played netball when I was in high school. That counts. But the cool part of it is mm -hmm. our former headmaster in high school, David mm -hmm. Mutambara, he would say, it's either you're participating mm -hmm. or you are supporting. So whether you didn't like sports, you'd find yourself supporting mm -hmm. one sport. So because rugby was the thing yes. in high school, or it still is the mm -hmm. thing in high school, especially when it's the first team, we were forced to wear our number ones. We mm -hmm. came to school in our blazers on a Saturday and we'll sing the cinema to war cry, mm -hmm. supporting <laughs> the boys, yes. even if we didn't know what was taking mm -hmm. place, but we just needed to be there to give the boys the support. Mm -hmm. So that's eventually how I then started liking sport and also mm -hmm. because my kids are into sport. So yeah, I'll sit and really want to understand what was going on mm -hmm. when it was cricket and when it was soccer. So that's what really made me get almost into um, loving soccer, I loving football, oh. loving rugby. Yes. I love that you've already started highlighting the spirit of sport because it's this superhuman feeling that seems to be bigger than all of us. Mm -hmm. So when did you know that this is what I want to do? You've mentioned that you did it as a mom, but then at what point did you make the decision that, okay, I'm going to wake up every day and I'm going to do this? I was actually chubby when I was growing up. So as I was growing older, mm -hmm. I saw that you need to take care of yourself. Of course. So I started exercising, mm -hmm. I started running, mm -hmm. and then I started going to, to the gym. Mm -hmm. And then that's when I met uh, one of the coaches, the rugby coaches, and mm -hmm. he actually says, I think you should come and join us. Oh. So that's when I went in and I joined uh, the coach. Then he was the national team's coach for mm -hmm. the lay disabled. Yes. So I was actually coming in and training with the girls. Mm -hmm. And then he also mentioned that, oh, well, since you're into mental wellness, mm -hmm. you can also talk to the girls. So that's when I really got into rugby. All right. And I really appreciate the fact that you are a woman in sport and you're not a woman in women's sport. There's not many of you women who are in men's sports. So is there a difference in the way that Maybe you, not in the way that you're treated, but is your experience perhaps any different from the experiences of other managers who might be of a different gender than you? I don't think there's any mm -hmm. difference. We actually work with other managers who are managing women mm -hmm. rugby, mm -hmm. who are managing other sport. And there are also other women in rugby. Uh, mm -hmm. The likes of Patience Pazani, she's, she's a female ref. So yeah, it's exciting to be breaking into mm -hmm. the men's world because usually it's in the professions, mm -hmm. the engineers and you know, women yes. engineering, but now it's women in men's sport. So it's very exciting. So yeah, there are quite a number of women who are actually in uh, men's sport. Patience mm -hmm. Pazani, like I said, mm -hmm. there's Abigail Kawonza. She's yeah. actually the, the president for the rugby union. So yeah, we're breaking ceiling, we're breaking the ground. Yes, yes. we're here for it. <laughs> Nyari and I are about to take a break, but when we come back, we're going to be talking more about her work with the old Hararins rugby boys.
Welcome back. I am Gosin Nube and I'm still with you on Locker Room with the queen of old Hararians rugby, Nyari. We're back now. Thank you. So Gosling. what I've wanted to ask all along is what's been your biggest moment in sport? My biggest moment was um, when we beat OGs in their own backyard. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Yes. And this was my first season in rugby. Mm -hmm. yes. And we went and we played our final at Old Georgians mm -hmm. and we beat them in their own backyard. Oh my goodness. It's just seen this? the excitement <laughs> and the uproar. It was a very tense game, mm -hmm. but as we did it and we were so excited. And also winning the two championships because Old Hararans, as it stands, is the champions of rugby as oh, we speak on. at the moment. Mm -hmm. So it was like uh, my first season and we beat one of the best clubs mm -hmm. and winning all the two championships. So yeah, ish. it was just an exciting season for me. And that is a big moment. And I want to go back to the conversation that we just had about mental health, right? How important is men mental health to a sports discipline, particularly to a team? It actually is very important because it's about team building mm -hmm. and working together as a team yes. that makes that glues the team together. Mm -hmm. So understanding each individual from where they are coming from makes the team stronger. Mm -hmm. We know when it's uh, when one's emotions are are not correct mm -hmm. or their tempers are flaring. Mm -hmm. We know how to come together and work together as a team. We know how to to talk to each other as a team. So it is very, very important understanding each other as a team mm -hmm. as we do team talk and as we do our training sessions every Tuesdays and Thursdays. These are some of the things that we talk about. We need to understand each other for us to work together as a team. All right. So how much of team management is also, because I understand sports people like artists are people who are very passionate about what they do. So how much of sports management is and I hate to say this, the management of egos. Yes, tempers will flare, mm -hmm. emotions will roll, but hey, as adults, we then have to sit down and mm -hmm. put ourselves together, compose ourselves so that we work towards achieving the same goal, which is winning yes. and togetherness and teamwork and team effort. Mm -hmm. So everything is about the team. So I always talk to the boys that it's not only about how you perform in the field, it's also about your attitude, yes. it's about your behavior. We're talking about that behavior that you don't see, yes. but people are watching, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. So we emphasize that it's not only about the play, mm -hmm. but it's also about how you carry yourself as an, as an individual. Because as you're playing for the club, yes, but you're marketing yourself as an individual, so you have to have the correct attitude, you have to have the correct behavior. Mm -hmm. Throwing tantrums doesn't work when you're working as a team. It will only just demoralize the team. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah, the invisible reputation mm -hmm. is the word that I wanted to actually yes. talk yes. about. That you never know who's watching because people are scouting from all over. So it's about your attitude and behavior, not only mm -hmm. about how you perform in the field. You can be a very good performer, but if your attitude sucks, it's mm -hmm. not going to help. So it also just comes with how you carry yourself mentally. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be throwing tantrums to the ref, it's not going to change the ref's position. Mm -hmm. It will only just come back to you as somebody who's got an attitude. Mm -hmm. Yes, things go wrong in a game, but you need to pull yourself together and let it be. That's how the game is. It's all about the game. Yeah, so these are some of the issues that we talk about when we do team talk and mm -hmm. when we do mental wellness in sport and all the other issues that might be a problem. So I always tell the guys that I'm here for them if they mm -hmm. need to talk. They can actually, we actually have sessions where they can set up appointments, then we can mm -hmm. do a one-on-one -on, -one on individual basis, yes. and then we talk serious mental issues, should there be any, yes. So that we have a holistic individual mm -hmm. at the end of the day, physically fit and mm -hmm. mentally fit. Do you uh, adopt any group therapy methods for, for the team specifically? Yes, oh. we definitely do that on our training sessions. So we set aside every 10 minutes of the l last 10 minutes of the training sessions when we talk about issues. We actually discuss what worked on the previous games, what we need to improve on on the previous games. That's when we explore our behaviors, we explore our attitude. We, we talk about it in a, in a group session so that everybody is comfortable and we are there for each other. Yes. All right. It sounds to me like you also sort of double as maybe the team's 
mental health wellness person I yes guess. yes i actually right. double up mm -hmm. as a mental because that's part of the manager's job as yes. well to take care of the uh, well wellness of the players mm -hmm. so it's i double up it's just that i'm qualified mm -hmm. and i'm trained to do that yes. so it becomes easy for me to manage and to also double up as a mental wellness advocate for the boys all right so from our talk what i've heard is you've played sport Sort of. Sort of. <laughs> and you've been a sports mom. Yes. And you also now are a sports manager. Yes. Those are three roles. Yes. The one thing they have in common is sport. Yes. But which one of these three would you say, this is the one that I could do for the rest of my life? Yeah, I could do sports management and mm -hmm. also be there for my kids. Mm -hmm. As long as they're still in sports, mm -hmm. my son is passionate about being an, uh, a professional soccer player. So mm -hmm. I'm going to be there to support also. Mm -hmm. In as much as I support the boys at rugby, I will still support mm -hmm. my, my boy because he also wants to be a professional athlete. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, manager also comes with a, yeah, it's a big role. It All is right. a big role. Because then my next question would have been, does it ever at any point during the time that you're managing these men, does it ever feel like you kind of have to bring your mommy boots to work and sort of double up as just a little bit of a parent? Yeah, sometimes when I have to, because I also have to feed the boys, I have yeah. to make sure the boys have eaten. Well. <laughs> I have to make sure the boys are mm -hmm. hydrated because mm. hydration, hydration yes. is very important. Mm -hmm. So I also have to make sure that there's food for the boys. Mm -hmm. So that's where the mummy aspect comes in yes. because I actually have one of my guys who's like, no, ma'am, I need like double the amount. <laughs> Funny enough, is <he's> very <laughs> tiny. So, yeah, that's when mm -hmm. the mummy aspect comes in because I have to feed the boys. And when we travel, I have to make sure everybody's on point. Mm -hmm. So, check, is everybody here? Is everybody present? And when they get sick or when they get injured in the mm -hmm. game, yes, the physiotherapist takes them to, to the hospital with the ambulance. Mm -hmm. But yes. I have then, after the game, to follow up and mm -hmm. make sure that everything is going all in order. So my next question would be, because you're a woman in the middle of all this testosterone, how do you navigate that? Because I think a lot of people are wondering. Like I said before, that mm -hmm. I, um, I get so much respect from the boys. Yes. Yeah, I get mm -hmm. so much respect. And I, I really must say that it's, it's a pleasure working with the guys. It's because people would think it's all about testosterone <laughs> and beer. Yes. And no, <laughs> no, it's not that. When we come to to the games mm -hmm. and when we come to practice it's serious business yes we can do celebrate after mm -hmm. but it's it's all work they put their all into mm -hmm. it and i get so much respect i get so much respect and we love that for you we're going to go to a quick break and when we come back nyari is going to take us through a typical match day in the locker room my name is ngosi Nube, and you're watching the locker room We're back here at Old Hararians Rugby Club with Manager Nyari on match day. Manager Nyari, please tell us what goes into making all of this happen on match day. Oh, it's a lot of hard work. The games actually started in the morning at 8. So this is one of the uh, second from last games where OH is playing uh, Northern Chiefs. So yeah, we are so excited that the boys are going to make it. The momentum is good. Uh, the crowd is good. So we are happy that 
it's gonna be a good day and the weather was also perfect for the match day today we were just worried about the rains because it's been raining the whole week so we are happy that the weather is good the crowd is good and everything is just going as planned all right say this goes perfectly and we win what are we doing to celebrate uh we're gonna have burgers the boys are gonna get burgers and chips uh, we're gonna do drinks. I guess the old boys like remember I told you that uh, old Hararens is part of Prince Edward yes. So we have old boys from Prince Edward who are actually sitting in the pavilion So they usually put something for the boys to celebrate So we are hoping if the boys win we're gonna get something from the old boys in support of our win So you should wait and see how the game goes. Um, I'm so happy and excited the boys are doing well Yes, the becoming a bit fit because it has been off season so now this is our second game so the boys are getting into the momentum now and without jinxing anything you know sometimes things don't go the way you want them to go mm -hmm. say we don't get the result that we want here what's the way forward from here? well it's a game we either win or you lose so we sit down we look at the drawing board we see where we went wrong then we perfect it for the next game because our next game is next weekend we're going to be having games uh, consecutively up until the end of the season so we go back we sit down we make it happen again on the drawing board and then we work on it and hopefully there'll be no need to do that we're hoping yes. but anyway we still have to sit down see where we could have improved see uh, what we could have done better and yeah so we always sit down and go back to the game and see what we could have done better what we could have achieved more it's all about more you know so yeah We'll still sit down and uh, do a preview of the game. Okay, so now that we're halfway into the match, I want you to tell us something, a little team secret that you may have that you sometimes do like at the beginning of every match. What do you do? We do a pre warm up yes. session, we hydrate. You see, the weather is a bit hot today, yes. so it's hydrate, 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 and our pre session to give the boys the momentum, our war cries, the support from the coaches and myself. Yes, the strapping from the medic team, our physio. Yeah, so that's basically what happens before the game. All right, Nyeri, now one last final secret that I'm going to ask for you. I know celebrations get a little crazy sometimes. What's the craziest you've seen your boys do to celebrate a win? Oh my God, when we won the, the league championship, the boys actually bought the, the boys the old boys had donated drinks and then the boys put all the drinks in their big trophy <laughs> some were putting the lid on their head mm -hmm. some were <laughs> drinking from the big cup yes. and it was all crazy and the boys just had fun and we were so excited we are still here with manager nyari on locker room on nrtv now we won't take her word for everything that she says we're going to talk to a few people that she works with day by day in running old hararians rugby Nyarai has been uh, with the team for about a year now. We've been working very well together on managing the boys and she's fit in seamlessly into the, the way the team works and which is one of the things that has been beneficial in us being successful in the past season. One of the things that I really like about Nyarai is that uh, she's very creative and has come up with a few good ideas that have uh, helped with the, the way the team gels and the way the team operates. The team has been able to um, really come together because of I think a counseling background and understand uh, the way the team dynamics work the individuals coming together as a team she's been able to incorporate that in uh, her business work side of things into the sport um, I think the way that she introduced uh, certain things like the, the food program that we have for players uh, just a feminine touch to the way the team is managed has been a big success for the way our team has come out successful uh, in the 2022 season. This 2023 season has also started with a great influx of players, obviously because of the way we were successful last year and uh, credit goes uh, mostly to what uh, our manager has done. You know, it's been a good journey working with uh, Mim Nyarai, uh, coming into the community with uh, gents around her, you know, but then she comes in putting on her hands, all hands on deck and um, I believe she's uh, really tried for us, she's really gone a long way for us and uh, we don't even see that we have a lady, part of us, uh, in between the team, you know. So yeah, I think uh, she's done well, she's done well, it's, uh, it's a good privilege. She also works as a mother as well in that team, so for me, uh, I think she's done well. I'd like to thank her for coming in and uh, we appreciate her. 
And now that we have had a conversation with manager Nyari, we spent the whole day with her here on the field and we even managed to glean into part of what her teammates say. Now that we've done all of that, we want to know from you. Say there's a little girl four or five years old somewhere and she's thinking of going into sport professionally. What would you say to her? I'll tell her to go for it. Uh, the sky is the limit. Follow your dreams. Go for it. I enjoy it here. I love working with the boys. There's so much respect from the boys. So, yeah, just follow your dreams. The sky is the limit. Go break the ceiling, girl. And uh, for anyone within or without the world of sport, what cutting words would you want to give us today? There's so many opportunities coming out, so they should try the local communities who are introducing sports. So they can start off from there and they can find their way. There's even sport in school. So just go try it. Go try even at school. See how it goes. You never know where you might end up. And as we are here, they also uh, headmasters, people from other colleges that will be scouting for talent. So yeah, I'll urge the people to just go, go for it try it and see how it goes and there we have it the message of the day go for it try whatever you must to be your best self My name is Ngosi Ngube and this was The Locker Room. Thank you for joining us.